This is a DIY Super Nintendo controller with a new custom PCB, a 3D printed shell, a longer sleeve connector cable and self-made resin cast buttons. This is as custom built as it gets and in this video I will show you how I did it and how you can build one too. So let's get right into it. Welcome back everybody. A couple months ago I did a lot of research for custom controllers, mainly GameCube related and what I found is that there is a very active scene around building and modding controllers for playing competitive Smash Bros. Melee. Which got me thinking, when there are open source projects for GameCube controllers out there, maybe there are some for other consoles too. So I dug a little deeper and found this Reddit post by the user Beer is my middle name, better known as TaylorMade AK. In his post he explained that he sadly managed to fry his Super Nintendo controllers because of electrostatic discharge. You know, the little saps you get from standing up or rubbing against some fleece fabric then touching something made out of metal. <laughs> And that's the reason why he came up with this awesome open source project, making a custom PCB with basic ESD protection, LEDs and a lot more features that makes this project very easy to build for yourself. Around that time it was clear to me that I want to build one and this is where today's sponsor PCBWay comes in. I have told them that I want to manufacture some PCBs and they agreed. For transparency's sake, I want to mention that they partially covered the cost of manufacturing, but all my opinions are my own and I was not paid to say anything I won't stand behind. I also chose to try out their assembly process, because this step takes a lot of time finding all the right parts from the bill of materials and then painstakingly soldering every small component in place. It's a real hassle and there are so many steps involved in this project, so it's a neat shortcut. Now for the shell, I imagined a full custom controller that really looks visually stunning, like all those DIY GameCube controllers out there. I thought of epoxy resin casting my own shells, but this would easily triple the cost of the project. So I went out and looked for other solutions. After some research, I found this controller files made by Michael B. Doherty. He modeled a SNES controller from scratch, as close to source as it gets. That was exactly what I needed, so 3D printing is the way to go is what I thought before finding out that there is not a single flat surface on this NES controller, making it really difficult to print with normal filament printers like the one in the back there. This led me to days of printing and failing over and over again. It is a real rabbit hole I will dive into in another video. So that got me thinking again, why not try out the 3D resin prints from PCBWay? They offer a wide range of solutions and I was really stoked to see that they had a clear resin option. And I love clear see-through stuff, as you can see in this video here. So I've uploaded the files, selected the resin I wanted and had nothing more to do than waiting for everything to arrive. And after a few weeks, the package with everything finally landed at my doorstep. This is like Christmas all over again. I was so stoked on seeing all the parts that I totally forgot to film the first opening of the box. But I just took a peek and left everything wrapped for you to see. Everything came well packaged and with lots of layers of foam and bubble wrap. Exactly what I wanted to see there. The PCBs look gorgeous with that white soldering mask I chose and I'm really happy with the outcome. Now to the 3D printed chairs and oh boy, do they look nice. I never had the pleasure of holding a 3D resin printed part in my hands and I must say I kinda want a resin printer now. I need to look into it, but anyway. So now everything's in the house for actually building the controller and as we have a lot of stuff on the list today, we better get started. Okay, so let's start by disassembling the donor controller. We need a few things off of it, mainly the buttons and the controller cable. As I said in the beginning, we do make our own cable today, but there are some components on the original cable we need to chop off. To get to it, we first need to disassemble the controller plug. And this is where this handy little tool comes in. You see, the plug has four little tabs that hold everything together. And without such a tool, there is virtually no way to get the plug to open without damaging it. First, I use a little heat to get the plastic warmed up. Then I slip over the plug opener. Next, I get a pry tool and slide it under the auto shell of the plug. Then simply press in the opening tool with one hand and try to pull the inner plug out with the other. It is a tedious process and there is a lot of trial and error between what works and what doesn't. But in the end, we will get the plug open, hopefully with as little damage as necessary. Now just open up the back end of the plug and get all the connectors out. These are the connectors that we need. 
I don't know the specific name of these connectors to buy them online, so I figured why not just reuse them from the original cable. So I chopped them off and carefully opened the two little wings on the cable end. Then I set them aside as I need them later. To get that flattened ring off the cable, I used the vise to get it back in a round shape. Be careful with it, as it could easily break. Now for the new cable, I measured around 2.3 meters of length from my 5 core roll and cut it with a side cutter. Then comes the sleeving part. Fire has made an awesome tutorial on how to sleeve cables and I see it as a definitive guide on how to do it. So I will link it down below. Make sure the paracord is long enough. And after the paracord is sleeved over the cable, we need to tackle a little problem I've made in the planning phase. See, I haven't paid enough attention when sending the bill of materials for assemblement. So naturally, they sold it in these Molex cable connectors, which I don't have the other side to it. And as I don't want to drag this project on for any longer, I just get them off the PCB and solder the wire directly to it. This is completely my fault and could have been easily prevented, but it is what it is. And don't forget to pay attention to what wire goes where, otherwise it won't work in the end. Okay, so now let's take a look at the other side of the cable. Here again, we need to strip the wire to get it lined up with each salvage connector, then crimping it down. This should give a solid connection, but to make sure it really sticks to it and to prevent signal loss, I used some flux and soldered the wire down to the connector. To finish off the soldering part, I quickly cut some wire from the original cable and connected both shoulder buttons to the main PCB. And with that, I can put away the soldering iron. Now comes the fun part. I want the controller plug and the shoulder buttons to be white, so I will spray paint them. But before that, we stay inside a little longer and prepare the D-pad and the ABXY buttons for molding and resin casting. I have a video on how to resin cast game cartridges here on this channel, so I will fly through it a little bit. First, let's get a base ready for the mold box. I backfilled the ABXY buttons to be more substantial, so they will get a little more heavy and the colors will pop a little more. The D-pad will rest on this little plateau and will be left as is. Now I mix up a small batch of Smoove-On's Moldstar Platinum Cure Silicone, pour it over and put it in my DIY pressure pot. While we wait till it's cured, I prepare the parts that need to be sprayed on and lay down the first coat of primer. And after around 75 minutes, the silicone should be ready. So I get it out of my pressure pot, remove the walls, flip it around and get the clay off the D-pad. Then I clean it up some more, add some registrations, add the vent sprouts for the resin, rebuild the walls and put the mold release on. Then I pour another batch of silicone just as before and put it back in the pressure pot for an hour. The first layer of primer should be dry by now and I proceed to build up one more layer before spraying everything white. I make sure to not spray too much on the inside of the plug as it may cause fitting problems later. Now back again to the silicone mold. It should be ready by now. So I remove all the vent spruces and then gently try to separate the two part mold. And with the original buttons out of the form, I quickly mixed up some resin, added some color and sparkle to my liking, degas it and put it in the closed up mold with a syringe. Then it goes back in the pressure pot to make sure no bubbles are forming. Now that the spray paint has set and everything is bone dry, we can start to assemble the cable. First, put on the outer shell of the plug, followed by the little ring we removed earlier from the original cable. I also put on a bit of heat shrink to make sure nothing will come off in the future. Now it is time to put the pins to their corresponding holes. Make sure to follow the diagram here on the screen or the controller won't work correctly. I also made sure that the wires are long enough so I have enough room to get them in the pinholes. Now don't clamp down everything just yet. Instead, connect the controller to your Super Nintendo to make sure everything is working correctly. I just use one of the rubber membranes to make sure every button contact works as intended. When perfect operation is confirmed, I start to clamp down the controller plug. Again, I use a vise for the ring and then set the heat shrink in place. And with sliding the outer shell over the controller plug, we have made our perfect looking DIY cable. After a few hours, we can finally take a look at our finished buttons and I must say, I'm quite pleased with them. I really love the combo of the pearlescent sparkles and the white. And now it is finally time to put everything together in the clear 3D printed shell. Oh, and I forgot to mention before, I also bought those clear rubber membranes for the clean plain look. Then come all the buttons, the L and R triggers and the rubber membranes on top of it. And then finally the PCB. 
This will be a tight fit as I found out, but it is possible. Again, just be careful not to break anything. And now only the back of the shell remains. It is a little hard to get everything lined up with the front part, so take your time here. Then we just need to put the screws in and we're done. All right. Now everything's in its place and we've finally done it. Now let's take a look if everything works and for that we roll some beauty shots. So let's get in. I'm so relieved that everything worked out and I think this is my best work to date. The controller feels good in the hand and I love the extra weight the backfill buttons have. They just feel, well, different, you know? It's quite hard to explain. I'm also very pleased with the 3D print from PCBWay. The quality is almost perfect. The finish feels very smooth and I can't really make out where they had the print supports. Yeah, here and there are some small marks, but all in all, and then as a one-off part, this matches the quality of injection molded plastic quite well in my opinion. The PCBs and their assembly service is also excellent and had no issues ordering my parts. Sure, there was this little hiccup with the Molex adapter, but again, this was totally a mistake at my end and again, easily preventable. They also offer a wide range of other services like injection molding I just mentioned, sheet metal fabrication and CNC machining. And they also have an online chat available if you need help with ordering your parts or have questions about the process. So many thanks again to PCBWay for helping me out making this project a reality and check out the link in the description down below. Now let's wrap up this video. This was kind of a big project for me, with so many things having to fall in place to realize it. So I want to shout out the open source community for getting me excited and inspired with new projects like this. I will link all the things in the description so you can look up everything necessary to make your own DIY Super Nintendo controller. Or maybe you want this specific one? Then maybe it's your lucky day, because I want to give away this controller to one of my followers on Instagram. So all you need to do is to head over to my account and make sure to follow. That's all. Shipping is on me and also worldwide. And I will draw the winner in two weeks after this video goes live. Good luck everybody. So big thanks to all of you for sticking around. If you like videos like this one, I have many more about retro modding and gaming in the pipeline. So subscribe now to not miss any of that goodness. Alright, I'm Paul, this is my little mod shop and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.